Hey everybody, Jason here. Today I'm going to be working on an iPhone 10 that was sent here for data recovery. This iPhone 10 was swallowed by a large mammal and then pooped back out. After that it was peed on. So let's have a look at this thing. We're going to do a nice visual inspection here on the outside. It looks like an everyday iPhone 10 that was mistaken to be waterproof as many, many, many people do. Now I'm going to go ahead and warm this up a little bit here before I start yanking on things. I know how bad you all want to see me yanking on things. Oh baby. Oh, full disclosure, this thing was not swallowed by a large mammal. This thing went for a swim in the ocean. This is a saltwater phone. Oh, God, and it's got... It's still wet. Holy shnikes. I don't ever get to see a wet phone. Like, this is a rarity. This thing is wet. Okay. Screen assembly has been removed. I'm going to go ahead first off here. Let's just get the board all the way out of it. Rats! I was hoping this was going to be one I didn't have to take the board out of. All right, here we go. Three screws and the logic board is coming out of this phone. Here we go. One, two, and then this crazy little bracket looking thing down here is three. I love it. Three screws. Don't stab the battery and don't forget the SIM tray. All right, let's tear this out of here being very careful not to tear our face ID flex cable that's up here somewhere. Ta -da! I don't know, boy, we got some wet here on the bottom of it. I'm always looking for flexy spots down here toward the bottom of the board. Let's just look at this under the microscope. Like, can we get away with not separating the PCB? There's a significant chance that we could. Look here, we got some solder balls squeezing. See this? We've actually got a lot of solder balls squeezing here. Uh-huh. This happens whenever there's heat. Now, the iPhone 10, it has been notorious for shorts over here on these lines. Oh my goodness, look, it's got... How hot did this thing get? It's got solder squeezed out all the way up here. You know, I would say that, okay, we've gotten a short here. You know, this capacitor shorted and made a bunch of heat and squeezed this out, but... Not all of them. It's almost like the whole entire board got hot. Holy crap, is this going to be successful? All right, I'm going to go ahead and open us up a board view here. Okay, so here we are looking at the iPhone 10. We're going to want side B here. And let's zoom in here and we're going to get a look at these caps alongside a NAND. So one of our first ones here, actually first one, third one, fourth one, those are 1v8 IOs. And then the one here that I actually just chunked off, that's our second one in line. That one is C2649 and C2649 is a PP3V0 NAND line. We're going to check these lines in resistance mode. These are notorious for winding up with shorts, so it puts the meter on the screen. It connects the meter, okay, and we are in auto, and we've got our black probe on ground, and we're going to put our red probe on 3V0 NAND, and we are getting 130 kilo big ones. That's not so bad. Okay, C2645 over here, that is PP1V8IO, and PP1V8IO is measuring, as you can see, 1.1 ohms to ground, so that is not acceptable. Now, switching back over to the board view here, we've got all these caps on PP1V8IO, and we need to figure out which one it is. Now, I normally do it by look on the iPhone 10 because they look screwed up, so let's see if I can find any here that look obviously screwed up that would be screwed up bad enough to give us 1M to ground. There are so many PP1V8IO... Ooh. There are so many PP1V8IO caps that this phone will have no problem booting and living without one. I think we found our, our demon here. Look how black this one is. I bet you that's it. Maybe. Should we just start flingling? 
Should we just start flicking them off the board until we get the right one, or... Ugh. Ugh. I'm going to hook us a ground clamp up to this board. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to set the power supply up so that it is outputting 1.8 volts. So let's get over here. We're going to dial this back down. Actually, let's do a little less. Let's do 1.5. I'm going to set our current limiting up for, oh, let's do a half an amp. So now we've got our supply set up to put out one and a half volts at 500 milliamps. Now for this, I'm going to just use a little drop of alcohol, like this board hasn't had enough urine and things on it. What we'll do is I'm gonna put a drop of alcohol here and then I'm gonna to touch PP1V8. I know how much you like hearing me say PP. I'm gonna to touch it over here. And what we wanna see here is if this alcohol bubbles over here. Okay, I see nothing bubbling. Let's go a little bit higher. Let's go up to 1.5 amps. We're gonna add an amp of current. And I'm going to do the same thing. A little alcohol here. Current over here. Oh, yep, that's it. See it? Okay. So to get rid of this PP1V8 IO short, I'm going to use a very special yet magical tool. This is a technique that has been used by Native Americans and Indians and Boy Scouts since the beginning of time. Basically, we're going to take and we're going to insert our pool right next to this stupid cap and flick it right out of the way. I don't know what it is about these caps. They just, they don't stand up too well to urine and, and seawater. All right, let's get back over here. We're gonna check it for a short and we're gonna put our black probe on ground and we're gonna put our red probe on PP1V8IO and we are getting 31,000 big ones, which means this board should be capable of booting. Should I go ahead and take this thing all the way apart and ultrasonic clean it on the inside? Or should I at least take it apart and look at what it looks like between the board halves? We're gonna take this one apart, guys. With data recovery, it can be it can be a really fragile process, man. Like say, if you've got a bridge between a 20 volt backlight line and a 1.8 volt data line, you can really, really destroy your chances of being able to recover the data. This is for a really good client that sends a lot of data recoveries. We're not going to chance this one. This one's going to get taken apart. If we have any shorts in very key places, this phone will not be recovered and it will it'll screw up my success rate on the iPhone 10. I have a killer success rate on the iPhone 10. If you are one of my iPhone 10s that has not been recovered, shh, shh, don't tell nobody. All right. As usual, we're going to let this board heat up and as soon as it's ready to pull apart, I will come back to this video and it's a really good idea for me to be doing this because as this heats up, let's set this down so you maybe be able to hear it. There we go. Listen. Ooh, you hear all that? <laughs> That's water boiling out of this thing. This thing's still wet inside. I'm so glad that I didn't decide to just plug this in and try it. All right, guys, I've got a few videos up separating the iPhone 10 and I watched a video here recently that uh, Sven from Union Repair posted, showed a really cool technique for separating these boards. They threaded a screw into one of these screw holes, as you'll see I've done, and they use it as like a handle. All right, here we go. We're all the way up to temp, and what I'm gonna do here, instead of, you always see me like, dun, 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 lift it up and then I drop it and I whine. What we're gonna do, we're gonna use our tweezers, we're gonna grab right a hold of this screw here on top, we're gonna pick it right up off the board. Here we go. Oh, that's so much better. Thank you, Union Repair. Thank you for saving my life. I don't have to hide in the closet no more. Ow, ow, man, that's hot. Where's the warning label? You can tell this thing wasn't made to sell on the shelves in the United States, or it would have a label on the bottom that would say like, warning, don't put this in your butthole. This isn't made to be sold in the United States. How's the board look? Man, this thing got hot, guys. Look at the solder beads squeezed out down here. It got hot, but I'm not seeing... I was going to say, I'm not seeing anything in the way of liquid intrusion, but when you get down here and you start seeing this sludge, this is salt. This thing took a swim in the ocean. And it's got... 
signs of heat. That's some of Apple's glue. I'm looking for any and all signs of liquid damage. Here we've got some salt. And uh, yeah, we're not going to try to recover this without ultrasonic cleaning. So the next step here for this one is going to be ultrasonic cleaning. Let's look at the bottom part. I really don't need to ultrasonic clean the bottom. I'm just worried about salts that have gotten between balls. This actually looks eh, pretty promising for recovery. I have recovered a ton of PP1V8 IO short phones, but what really gets me about this one is the swelled solder balls that we have everywhere. Oh my God. Well, I can just see it clouding off of this. Holy crap. Not this time, mofo. We've got these boards sprayed off, cleaned off. I still gotta run them through the dryer, but before we do, let's have one quick, quick, quick glance at this top board. Dude, what is with all the solder balls? What really makes me uneasy about this one, guys, is all of the solder squeezing. Like, this don't happen without a lot of heat, man. And I'm just, I'm really worried that this board has already been heated to the point where we've got balls and stuff swelling under the CPU or under the PMIC. Um, ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Can't have that now, can we? Let's, uh, and see, that kind of crap's going to be going on under the chips, too. Like, you're going to have balls pushed out and touching each other under the chips. Let's see what that is. So that is on the other side of the board, on side A. We've got this side of this cap shorted to C2706. That is completely all right. We're gonna leave that, I'm not even gonna move it. Man, this is another board that has the look of something that's been dug around on and like refurbished. Is it possible that the solder balls squeezing everywhere that we see is not from heat after the thing died, but heat during manufacturing? That is quite likely. Let's get our screw out. We're gonna heat this thing up and let it dry. Now to do that, I basically, I use my preheater and I'm gonna put the bottom half of the board in this heater and we're gonna turn that on. And then I will sit the top half of the board in this heater and turn that on. I'm gonna let this sit for like an hour and let this completely dry. And then I'm gonna test this in my eye socket Make sure it boots, and if it does, we'll go ahead and slap it back together and recover the data. So, I'll be back in a moment. All right, let's find out what happens here. Let's take out our thingies. Let's put our customer's bottom board in here. Now, if the bottom board winds up hosed, you can substitute it for another bottom board. So we have this all hooked up the way that we need it. Next, what we're gonna do, we're gonna change the DC power supply a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and raise this up to what we need to boot. We're gonna raise this up to four, let's just do 4.1 volts and we'll need some more current. So we'll, let's set that for three amps. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the power supply on. We're drawing zero amps, that's a good sign. Now keep in mind, this is the first time that we've hooked power to the board where it belongs at the sufficient level. So I'm thankful to see we don't have a heavy load. Now, wait, uh, that don't count. It's not hooked up. It, it don't count. Look, I had unplugged a lead here early on. It's, it's not hooked up. So let's watch that current closely and I'm going to hook it up. Okay, we got 10 milliamps. Yes, acceptable. Now we're going to push the button to boot. Now when I say push the button to boot, I'm pushing the button here on my, um, my Tool Plus iPower thing and we're going to push it in one, two, three, boot. 90 milliamps, this is good looking, 130, this is gonna get an Apple logo. Yay, Apple logo! 
Yahoo! All right, guys, that's going to be the end of this video. Mm. I'm just kidding. We're we're not we're not anywhere near done. We have lock screen, and we have working touch now. There are a ton of things that cause the iPhone 10 to reboot, boot loop, things like that. For whatever reason, if I try to connect a good battery to this, if I try to connect a good dock flex to this, I very often wind up in situations where I can't get the backup to complete all the way. It'll reboot before it completes and just yada, yada, yada. We know that this phone is booting because we just seen it boot. And what I'm going to do here to finalize this recovery now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this board back together. I should, I, I really should stop the video now. I mean, I, I should just stop while I'm ahead and call this done, but I'm not going to. We're going to get this all the way up to the point where I have a backup and then we'll call it done. So we will put first the bottom part into our holder. And we're going to let this warm up for just a second because I need to spread flux and flux spreads a lot better when it's hot. So I'm gonna turn the burner on, let it warm up. All right, so as you can see, we're hot. Hope I didn't get any flux in my eye socket. There we go. We are fluxed. Turn the heat off because we don't want this shit melting yet. And now we're going to go ahead and set this board back on here. Trying to line it up the best that we can. A lot of people ask me, how come you're not reballing the RF board? Well, I do sometimes. But I try not to. Man, that's too hot to touch. Ah! All right, we've got this lined up to an acceptable amount and let's turn it on. We're going to heat it up. I think we are up to temp. Looks good. Looks good. I like to give it a good push right in the middle because of the thermal compound. Okay. This one's getting a little bit of a teeter action. I'm going to hold it down back here and out here. We can deal with a lack of connection out here, just ground, but if you wind up with a lack of connection here, you're going to have no touch. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn this off now and let it cool off. We've got a tiny bit raised up out here at the end. That should be okay. We're going to let this cool off, and then once it cools off, we'll have a quick look at it under the microscope, and then see if we can get the data. <laughs> data. I'm getting the data. Okay, we'll set that aside. Oh man, it's hot. Let's look at it under the microscope. So down here in our touch area, it is a little bit more raised up than I would care to see, but it should still be okay. Now, as we get out here at the end, I think I seen it pulling up and I did. It's pulled up and away a little bit out here and even less on this side. Ooh, I don't like seeing that pulled up right there. I might have to reheat this one. This is not good solder joints in here, guys. Now, the balls that you can see here are ground. Let's see if we've got enough to get the data, shall we? Let's slip this into a housing. Often, I just go ahead and reuse the customer's housing, but uh, this one's still wet. All right, we're going to reconnect up here. We're going to reconnect our power button. We're going to connect a dock flex. We're going to go ahead and connect this screen assembly. Okay. Now we are going to boot this on DC power. I'm not going to boot this yet on battery. In fact, I may go ahead and try to get a full recovery here on DC power. Okay. So there's our power. Let's turn the power supply off. And we'll hook it up right there. All right, let's see if this phone still boots. We're gonna turn the supply on and we draw no power. That's a good sign. And we're gonna press the power button and one, two, three. I love working on the iPhone 10. This is gonna get an Apple logo. 
Okay, let this boot. I am gonna line us up a transfer cable here because I'm an idiot and don't have it ready. The phone is booted, we're back up to the lock screen. But we are going to need a cable. <sighs> All right, slow down and breathe a little bit. Let's make sure our passcode is good. Okay, you can see that we have the phone on. We have working touch, so those back solder joints are okay. The passcode is correct. And I am now going to connect this to iTunes. All right, now we're gonna say trust. Type that passcode in again. I don't like this 0% on the battery. This is likely not going to be successful. We're going to be encrypting the backup. I type the backup encryption passcode, I type it on one keyboard and then I also type it on another. And I do that just in case I've done anything stupid and I've typed the password wrong twice. All right guys, this thing is sitting here in iTunes now. We're calculating the time remaining. I think we should be able to get through this backup Never mind. Okay, so for this recovery, we are going to need a battery hooked up. I can't believe I've started this video without having sufficient power lined up. We're gonna connect a charger. We should get a battery charging icon. We do. And the charger is drawing 1.5 amps. We are back with this thing. It's charged up to about 10%, which my USB port supplies a good amount of current, so 10% should be sufficient. All right, the phone's connected. It gave us a vibration. And now we're gonna see here if we can tell it to back up. I do encrypted backups because it backs up the very most amount of data. Plus, I think some customers, it makes them feel better if their data is encrypted, but some customers actually request that it's encrypted. So. Uh, this is going to be an encrypted backup. Password is already set, and we are going to hit backup now. And as you'll see, um, the battery percentage has already risen. This recovery should be successful, but I'm not going to call it successful until this thing is like completely done. So let's let this run, and I'll be right back. Oh no, the battery percentage has started going down. Uh oh. Wait. Now we're back up to 11%. Woo woo! Oh, 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 oh. We just went up to 12%. This is gonna make it. Woo, I'm starting to get excited. We're almost there. We need the index though. At the end of this backup process, it transfers a catalog or index or whatever you wanna call it. And without that, the backup is a real mess to deal with. Um, we can deal with a partial backup, but it's not nearly as pretty as having a nice full backup. Oh, and look, we've charged it up to 15%. This video is sponsored by everybody who ever said the iPhone 10 is waterproof. All right, there you go, guys. We have a successful backup today at 12.40 p.m. to this computer, and that's it. From there, anything can happen to this phone, and I have got the data. So what we'll do, we will disconnect it from the USB and pull this board out of this housing. Whoopsie. Don't forget the cord. All right, so there you have it, guys. This was another successful iPhone 10 data recovery. This one, I probably would have been okay to not separate the PCB, but is it really worth gambling? I'm, you know, I, I'm it. And if I screw this up, there is no other way to get the data that's on this board. You, you know, you can't grab another board and have the data. You can't buy it from anybody. This is irreplaceable stuff. Anyways, guys, that is going to be the end of this video. As always, the links for the tools that I use are in the description below. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, you can give me a thumbs down too. And that's it, guys. I'm going to move on. I really, really appreciate you watching, and I will see you next time. Have a good day, everybody. You think this will boot once it's fully reassembled? I don't. I don't know. It might. We'll see. Saltwater is mean and nasty. Now, even if they are just for data recovery, I still take great care to put everything back together. You know, with each new model that comes out, there's a certain level of intimidation that goes on, and like a lot of times I'll procrastinate and try not to work on it. But then it never fails. After a while, you start to get comfortable with it. Now, the iPhone 10, I thought would never, I would never get comfortable with this piece of crap. I'm kidding, I like it. It's like, oh, it's got a problem on the inside of this monstrosity of a soldered together conglomerate mess. Oh, let's take it apart real quick, fix it, and put it back together. All right, let's take our long screw and pound it directly into the hole that it belongs in. 
instead of every one that it doesn't belong in. That's what's wrong these days. There's not enough monogamy in the relationships between screws and logic boards. They just tend to sleep around and stick it in any hole they can possibly fit in. Hundred and seventy milliamps, two hundred milliamps, a half an amp. This phone's gonna work. All right. Last thing I'm gonna do is transfer the data off to a flash drive because this data recovery client, I always send it back to them on a flash drive, and I don't have to parse the data or do any kind of exporting because they know exactly what to do with an encrypted backup. Love me some data recovery, especially on the iPhone 10. All right. There we go. We've got some baseband online. And Wi-Fi is working. Oh, and look at this, look. Turns the volume up by itself. Not surprised.